Hi, it's Graham again from Spectrum Eye Care. Today we have a really interesting test for you. It's a hair screen test we've recently developed here at Spectrum and we've launched it recently and you are now able to download it off of our website. This is a very useful test. One can draw so much information from the plots. Whoever does cover test in all nine directions of gaze, none of us do, let alone try and measure the deviations in those directions. Without a full hair screen or synopter for, this just is not possible. Here's a chance to now quickly, effectively and accurately measure and monitor these deviations. You're able to do this test on any patient who has any symptoms you're not able to attribute to the Rx. Things like persistent headaches or any binocular discomfort, especially if it's sudden. From the plots, trauma, neurogenic, long-standing or recent anomalies can be identified and classified. We can confirm the presence of thyroid-related eye disorders. It's also useful to be able to monitor changes over a period of time. So go ahead and try this test and impress your patients at the same time. Let's have a look how it's done. When first opening the Spectrum HES test, you'll be prompted to calibrate the screen to ensure the measurements and plots that are generated are accurate. You'll also have the opportunity to check and adjust the neutrality of your anaglyphs. Remember red goes in front of the right eye, R for R, red for right. Select help from the top menu bar and this will display the practitioner guidelines. Read through these and familiarize yourself with the essentials of this test to ensure accuracy, repeatability and use, ease of use for the patient. At first your patient might be hesitant. Remember some people have never used a mouse, this is brand new to them and their movements might be jerky. Let them complete the test, you can always get them to do it again once they're more comfortable. Verbal encouragement here always helps a lot. Let's look what the patient sees during the test. You will select start from the top menu bar and you will see the patient instructions are now displayed. Go through these carefully with the patient and ensure they understand the instructions properly. Placing their elbow on the table and their chin in the palm of their hand will help stabilize them and restrict head movements. Check that the patient is sitting at the distance you have set. The default of 50 centimeters or 20 inches is the recommended distance, but you can change these in the settings. Be sure the patient follows the instructions carefully as this will affect the outcome. It is evident from the patient's interpretation of the position of point 1 that there's an overshoot at this point. Already we can expect an undershoot at point 1 for the other eye. Any deviation at point 5, the central point, will always tell us if there's a manifest tropia present. You will notice that the ring and the spot change color after point 9. As the plot is repeated, this is so that you don't have to reverse the anaglyphs to assess the other eye. As suspected, the right eye here is undershooting at point 1. An undershoot will always indicate which is the peritic muscle. On completion of the test, the plots for both eyes will be displayed graphically, and a table will be generated giving you the values for the deviations at the nine particular points of gaze for each eye. Now we can make some sense from the information. In this example, one can see that the underacting muscle is the right inferior oblique, Point number one on the right plot will indicate where that is. The magnitude is shown in the table at point one. As expected, according to Mr. Herring's law of equal innovation, there is an overaction of the left superior rectus, which is at point one on the left plot. By repeating this test on the patient over a period of time, it can be established if this apparent paresis is recent or of long standing. The magnitude of the overacting muscle slowly reduces with time. So, perhaps it's time to dig out and dust off the books and read up on Herring's and Chillington's laws which primarily govern binocular eye movements and behavior. It is these tests that often give renewed interest to this wonderful profession we find ourselves in. Here at Spectrum we're full of ideas and constantly updating and developing new tests. Be sure to check our website for other great tests as well as updates for this HES test. Thanks for watching. More next time. Until then, stay connected via the LinkedIn community.